Go to calls. We've got, um, okay. and Mike and Austin, you're on Hello, the air. Hello, I am from the Austin Stone. I'm sure you know the church. Okay. And um, I welcome you to join it. So we've got a great church, and uh, we're pretty much by the book. And uh, I've helped I've helped many lost souls uh, find their way, uh, so to speak. Yeah. Well, we're not lost. Don't have a soul. Wait, is this just a call <laughs> to advertise your church? Well, uh, I, I just wanted to start off by um, welcoming you to join, if you want. Well, it thank you. It sounds like you obviously don't belong to one now, do you? No, you're right. You're I right. Don't. We don't. But thank uh, you for the invite. But you did one time, didn't you? I did. Yes. I did as well. So you didn't uh, feel any warmth when you sang the hymns or listened to sermons or anything? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. The, but that has nothing to do with whether... Um, it, 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 I the came to the conclusion that feelings are not God. Yeah. So why exactly did you quit? Well, I quit because I did a lot of research into how the Bible came to exist and also into church history, how the church came to exist. And when I realized that, in my view, I couldn't find anything to substantiate that there was a hand of God involved, um, I began to question the authority of the church and of the Bible. And at that point, I stopped being a Christian, but I maintained theism for about another 10 years while I searched to try to find out then if, if the Bible is, not, is, is a man-made book and if the church um, founded yeah, upon you know, Jesus is based on that Bible and it's a man-made institution, then what really is God and, and what would God want me to do? And so I, I aimed my search more toward you know, just putting my life in the hands of whatever God was, that he would show me what, what was required, what I needed to do, just lead the way and I will follow, I'm searching. That went on for about 10 years until I came to the conclusion that um, if God is everything, uh, pretty much that's pantheism. So I thought I was a pantheist for about a week. I guess I was a pantheist for about a week. And then mm -hmm. I said, this is kind of ridiculous. It's the universe. And so we have a name for it. And God and matter are not the same thing. Material existence is material existence. And if that's what I'm calling God, then I might as well just say I'm an atheist. Well, it, it seems to me that uh, you can be a non-believer, but it's another step if you want to make a show and say you're an atheist and uh, start to say these bitter things. Uh, well, why? What if I said that's bitter? Yeah, why do you think we're bitter? Well, I mean, you, just the general tone I get from you is that you're actually mad or angry uh, with God. Gosh, uh, we just oh had that my goodness! <laughs> is this a joke? Are you a Poe? Is this a Poe or are you for real? Are you are you calling just to pull our legs or is this a, a serious call? But atheists cannot hate God. That is like it's it's a it's a nonsensical statement. A person who does not believe in something cannot hate the thing that they don't believe exists. Is this a serious call? This is a serious call. Uh, okay, so, so now wait a second. Show and, Do uh, you understand they, that an atheist does not believe a God exists? Do you understand that? <laughs> Do you understand that an yes. atheist does not believe a God exists? Well, of course. Okay, I, then, I then do you, you understand? Okay, then do, I'm not accusing you of being stupid. I just want to make sure we're clear on our definitions. If you understand I don't believe a God exists, how does the statement, I'm angry at God, make any sense at all? Well, angry, angry about religion, then. About, Thank about you. About this so-called institution, you call it. It is an institution. I mean, even if, it, yeah. even if you believe God produced it, it's still an institution. Right? I mean, it's, it's institutionalized. Well, for you sure. said yourself that you felt some warmth when you went to church, that it just wasn't for you, but uh, why, why do you have to make a show and say these things then? Well, Did you not hear the example of the homeopathic uh, remedy? Did you hear what I just talked about? 
If not, I'm happy to repeat it. I mean, really, if you were on the phone and you were on hold and you weren't really hearing it, that's fine. I'm happy to give you the example again. But the point is, I said that there would even be people that don't believe in homeopathy that would write to you and say, well, some people are helped just because they feel better because of a, a placebo effect. So why are you bitching about homeopathy? But the fact is there's a lot of people harmed by homeopathy. Well, and who I does can't, the church harm? Who does the church who harm? Does, are you kidding? We have, first of all, Christians in Nigeria who are killing their own children because God said to not suffer witches to live, and they believe their children are witches. We have Christians in Uganda who are passing laws to, they wanted to execute homosexuals as a crime, but now they've made it life in prison. We have Christians in Africa that are missioning and telling people in AIDS-ridden nations not to wear condoms. We have Christians here in Austin, Texas, who don't think that a woman should have a right to choose, that are down on women's rights. We have Christians across the U.S. who are trying to trample the rights of, of gays, who are trying well, to, to keep look, them I, find from it, I personally find it a bit insulting for you to say that my church is bad people. They're good people at my church. We didn't say, person. when did we I didn't, say we didn't that say your church is bad people? You asked me to give you examples of the harm that religion causes, and I just listed some. You, you asked think, me to. You don't to. think there are atheists who do bad things? I could tell you about them. How you would that didn't, make you feel? Wait a minute. Well, you, well, no. you didn't ask me to provide examples of that. You asked me specifically for examples of the harm that religion causes. You asked for that, and I provided it. How is that offensive to you? Well, I didn't do anything wrong to anyone. In fact, I think I'm a pretty <laughs> no, good person. No one said you did. to give you examples of wrong you've done. You asked me to give examples of harm that the church has caused, that religion has caused, and I provided those examples. How is that a problem? Well, why should that offend you? Why did you even ask for examples if, if getting those examples was going to upset you? All right then. Well, I, I just why, why don't you just have someone like Dr. Craig on your show? Why do you always beat up well, on on random people who call in? Why don't you have some actual no 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 no? Who am I beating up? Stop. We're not beating up anybody. I'm answering your question. And and listen, there there are however many. Um, religious shows on public access television and network television and there's there's this one atheist show here in Austin Texas why should we give um, airtime to a professional apologist because they're actually educated on the subject so, so you might actually have a challenge I think you guys are too so, scared so wait to a minute. have the serious guys on none of, none of us are professional atheists whatever that would entail <laughs> right. okay we're inviting people to call and tell us what they believe, why they believe it, and why we should believe it too. Right, but the other point, I, I want to just reiterate what Jen said earlier because I want to make sure you heard this. There are hours and hours and hours of TV and radio and in doctrinal institutions around the globe going nonstop promoting religious indoctrination and religious belief. And I really think it's ridiculous to get upset at a one-hour atheist amateur program that's put out weekly by an educational foundation here in Austin that's really just about putting out information on atheism. You think that one hour dedicated by a bunch of amateur atheist yeah, amateur. producers and, and cast and crew is, is really that, that intimidating to you? It's not intimidating. It certainly bothers people. It at certainly my, bothers you. Church. It bothers you. Yeah, but I mean, look at all the airtime you've got. I mean, for one billboard we put up in Austin, how many religious billboards do I pass well, every no wonder, day? Well, no wonder we have more shows. We're about 99% uh, of the country, really. No, you're That's, not. There's, no, I think, no, no, what no. is it, like 80% religious, and um, yeah. not all of that is Christian, but it wouldn't matter. Yeah, I don't, it I don't doesn't care. Matter. The point is, you have all the airtime, all the radio time, and we have a one-hour pro... You know what it reminds me of? There's a, there's a parable, actually, in your Bible that, that reminds me of this. It's, it's the one where they give the example of the guy who has like a hundred sheep and his neighbor has like one little pet sheep and the guy with the hundred sheep goes and steals his neighbor's sheep and slaughters it. And it's like, wow, you couldn't really deal with like the guy having one sheep? That was like freaked you out that your neighbor had one sheep was, even though you had a hundred. And it's like that's kind of what you're doing. You've got like all the, all the air time, all the TV time, all the money, all the resources. All, I mean, you've got people handing you 10% of the tithe. I mean, you, you've just got them coming in throwing their money at you. And yet this one hour show, that's, we have no budget. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like <laughs> nothing. And, and we should have Christians on to, to promote Christianity, really. Does that seem reasonable to you, honestly? If you want my honest opinion, I think you guys are scared to talk to 
oh. talk to serious, serious people about this. You'd Are you serious? You'd beat up on, on some clueless guys and then... The you call us, like, like the callers, the right? Back. Are the clueless ones. No, no, we, we invite people to call and defend their beliefs. Anybody can call us. And, and anybody can call us. We're on the show every Sunday. We let so you call. I mean, it, feel free to, and, any, we're, and we're letting you talk about whatever you want. Yeah, any of these professional apologists are welcome to call at any time. Well, Consider I, an invitation. I, just, I, I just want to say that I think a lot of the things you guys say are wrong. Well, so uh, about, I would expect that from the and I would just, For uh, example. For, Pardon me? For example. Well, th uh, that, uh, that there's no God, I guess, would be the start. If you're an atheist, then right off okay. the bat, um, we've got a bit of a problem. Um, well, yeah, well, well, but that's an easy problem to resolve because all it takes is a demonstration of a justification for your belief. I, I, you used really big words when you okay. talk. I'm sorry. It sounds a little... Okay. I just want you to demonstrate to me that your belief in the existence of a God is justified. Well, well why do I believe in God? Well, there's evidence for God everywhere you look. Like I mean, jazz? Just, just on the news lately, um, we had a, a national tragedy. Uh, uh, someone got shot through the brain. And That's they horrible. That. And, and wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. what? They uh, got shot uh, and, and they... Representative uh, Gifford right, got shot right. through the brain. Right. The doctor said it was a miracle she even lived. Um, she, got, she got shot so through you the don't, brain you and don't she think... is still alive and she looks like she will actually uh, get back to normal. What about the nine-year-old who died? Yeah. Well, uh, you just look on the news and the president said she's up in heaven and you want to tell us, you want to, uh, jumping in rain puddles, he said, and you want to tell people that it's just lights out when you, when so you die. So the president decides who's in heaven? Yeah. He said she's jumping in rain puddles up there. Did he see her? I mean, how does he know this? Well, you want to tell us that it's just game over when you're dying? No, you, I'm just when asking how you We're know asking this. asking how what you know this. What is the justification for claiming she's in heaven? And, and even if she is in heaven, is that a justification for someone shooting a little girl? Is that part of the miracle? Was that a nine-year-old got killed? I, it, it's a miracle that... That Representative Gifford survived. Uh, right. Imagine you got shot in the head. So you think the you'd have a good plan, chance to live? Right. The plan was about killing mm -hmm. several people so that God could show his beneficence in, in making somebody go through rehab after getting brain damaged from a bullet through the brain. That's your miracle. You don't think that's a miracle? If I think it's an extreme tragedy and that it's fortunate that not everybody was killed. But I don't think it's a miracle that somebody survived and is now having to go through rehab and she can barely, I don't even know if she can speak yet. Yeah, I mean, this is, somebody's know. brain but damaged. But she's even alive. <laughs> she's brain if, damaged if you, and people are dead. And that's exactly what I would expect to happen at an event where somebody shoots into a crowd. I don't consider several people shot dead and one person brain damaged to be proof of God's miraculous powers. 